assuming that's her coming up now. Yeah. I told you the car wasn't black. order more if you want to. Twenty dollars per cup. Then all you need to do is to call it. It's called a certified copy. Yes. So can I call call? Just call and order as many as you need. Sure. Not a problem. Hi Fluffy, it's Carl and I'm sorry for your loss. You take care of yourself, okay? Have on your left side. 
and it is symbolic of something that has been done for thousands of years in, in uh, biblical tradition, going all the way back to the Hebrew Bible, that when we experience a loss, we tear and rend our garment in order to show that our world is torn. Um, I'm, this is something that usually in Jewish tradition someone does for you, but because of these current circumstances, what I'll invite you to do is tear the ribbon, but don't tear all the way through. You're just going to make a tear in ribbon either from the side or from the bottom. Okay, and it kind of can cut. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's it. And there's a special prayer that we say, want to mention to all of the people watching uh, virtually I'm so sorry that in these times this is how we have to uh, have you here at Jerry's funeral as we say farewell to Jerry but it is an honor to be here with you uh, albeit virtually the other thing I'll say to all of you is that these with masks on our face it's a reminder these are bizarre times this is very very difficult and so you're not only going through a loss of a person but a loss of the ability to grieve to embrace and to be there for each other in the way that people have been for thousands of years i wish i could make that better in some way but all i will say is that we are with you we feel and we feel for you and we wish you lots of comfort in the ways that are available to us now and one day god willing we'll be able to embrace again embrace each other and I'm going to begin with a poem by Hannah Senesh. She was a fighter who tried to bring Jews from Europe during World War II back to what was then, just before the State of Israel came to be. She tried to bring them to the land of Israel. And she wrote the following. Yesh kochavim she'oram magia arza, raka asher hematzmam ovdu ve'enam. יש אנשים שזיב זיכרם מאיר כאשר הם עצמם אינם יותר בתוכנו. אורות אלו המבטיחים בחשקת הליל הם הם שמראים לאדם את הדרך. There are stars up above. So far away, we only see their light long after the star itself is gone. And so it is with the people we love. Their memories keep shining ever brightly, though their time with us is done. The stars that light up the darkest night, these are the lights that guide us. We live our days, these are the ways we remember. Jerry left a light in this world, a light that shines through you, through all of you. And when you live your lives to the fullest, I think it will show that he had an effect on you and that the two of you and all of you did just such an amazing thing caring for him in his, in his last chapter. Jerry passed away of COVID, of, of being COVID positive, and that I learned meaning that it was basically um, because of that and that if not, had it not been for COVID, he could have lived much longer. And 85 years, even though it is a full life, it's never enough. It never feels like enough time. What I'm going to read is a poem from the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, which talks about how there's a time for everything under heaven, that there is a time for being born and dying and, and so on and so on. What I hope this reminds you of, and what I hope you can hold in your hearts as I read these ancient words, is that each moment of our lives is something that affects us. And we 
don't only measure how many times we've gone around the sun. 85 years is quite a long time. 85 trips around the sun. But it can almost feel like we needed more. We needed more time. We focus on the moment. If you can hold on to just one moment today you had with your dad. My prayer is that there will be moments each day for the rest of your lives that you can hold on to and begin to see his life as a full life, not only one that was cut short by this disease, by this virus. There is a time for everything, a time for every experience under heaven, a time for being born and a time for dying, a time for planting and a time for uprooting the planted, a time for destroying and a time for healing. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for weeping and a time for laughing. A time for wailing and a time for dancing. A time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones. A time for embracing and a time for refraining from embraces. A time for seeking and a time for losing. A time for keeping and a time for discarding. A time for tearing and a time for sewing time for silence and a time for speaking, a time for loving and a time for hating, a time for war and a time for peace. We can turn that poem almost into a modern day poem if we think about Jerry's life. There was a time for war and peace in his lifetime. There was a time for dancing and a time for wailing. There was a time for being out by the beach or in a club in Havana and there was a time for mourning or more introspection or watching movies. So much of these moments make up a beautiful life. And I hope those memories and those stories that you have with you remain a comfort to you always. In just a few hours, Jewish people around the world will begin celebrating the holiday of Shavuot, the holiday where the Jewish people celebrate receiving the Torah at Mount Sinai. There's a beautiful Jewish mystical idea that when the Torah was given at Sinai, it was not only the Israelites who were living at that time who received the Torah, who received the Hebrew Bible. Rather, it was each and every person who ever was part of the Jewish people. Any person who was, is, or will be part of the Jewish tradition stood there and received those holy words. There are so many lessons we can take from this mystical idea, but there is one notion in particular that very much relates, I believe, to this moment, as we are here to honor the life of Jerry Schwartz. If we all stood at Sinai, and if none of us really ever remembers it, it speaks to the notion that there is something deep inside each and every person that drives us, that is at the core of our being. And in moments of great difficulty and in moments of great joy, that inner sense of who we are shines through. It connects us to one another. Jerry Schwartz was born in Philadelphia. He played the piano growing up, and he was pretty good at it, too. His parents, Lily and Izzy, had a shoe store on South Street, and so his sister, Maureen, affectionately known much later as Aunt Fluffy, cared for him. Madeline, you told me that your Aunt Fluffy was truly the belle of the ball. She could have been out with friends. She could have been doing so much. But instead, she always looked after Jerry. From an early age, Jerry knew what it meant to love someone from the core of their being, from that inside and central place, because his sister loved him so. Jerry found his way to Havana, Cuba, as was mentioned just a little bit earlier. And there, from across the room, he felt a connection to a woman, Margie who would later become his wife. The mystics say that anyone who was, is, or will be Jewish, even those who found their way to Judaism later in life, they too stood at Mount Sinai. Perhaps 
Jerry and Margie stood next to one another at Sinai. Or for those who may not be mystics, let me say the same thing in a different way. Perhaps at the core of their being, Jerry and Margie recognized something special in each other. Perhaps at their core, they were meant to find each other and bring the two of you into this world. Jerry would also find love again and bring Tavia into the world as well. And through that, the core of who he was brought the core of who you are into the world. Madeline, you told me that Jerry was a man who was drawn to the beach and the ocean, and to travel as well. He was on the beach in San Diego, in Australia, in Florida. He felt at home, near the waves, and in the sun. There was something about that scenery that brought him joy and brought him peace. He was a man who took very good care of himself. He ate flaxseed before it was cool. He ate right, and had it not been for Alzheimer's, he had no other ailments, even well into his 80s. As I said just a few moments ago, it is in times of great joy and in times of great difficulty when the core of who we are has the ability to emerge. Jerry Schwartz was at peace with the core of his being when he was on the beach. And that was in the good times. But the core of who he was also emerged in moments of difficulty. When he was suffering from Alzheimer's, Madeline, you told me that Jerry kept asking if his parents had sold the house on Warrington, a house that was sold more than a half century earlier. And he remembered the two of you. He remembered who you were at your core. He remembered his family. In good times and in tough times, the core of who we are can shine through. All of you here today, and all of you virtually, you were deep in the core of who Jerry was. And his story, and his life, is deep in the core of who you are. But it was not just Jerry's essence that was able to shine through in difficult times. It was very much yours as well. Madeline and Ellen, in the difficult moments of entering, of Jerry entering into your lives in his last chapter, more of who you are came through as well. A kindness, a generosity, a love that truly inspires me when I heard about how you took care of me. Madeline, you attributed this to your mother, a goodness that she had through and through. My prayer for all of you, all of you virtually as well, is that those memories that you have of Jerry can have the same effect on you that he had in his time on earth. May Jerry's memory always bring out the very best in you. May Jerry's memory remind you of who are at your core. May remembering him be a blessing to you. And may Jerry's memory remind you of what a blessing you are to him. May Jerry's memory be for a blessing always. Hannah Senesh, the very same author who wrote the poem about stars, wrote another poem about nothing else than the beach, about the waves. I'll read these words. Eli, Eli, shelo yigamer leolam. Achol vehayam mishrush shel hamayim. Verak hashamayim tfilat haadam. O God, my God, I pray that these things never end. The sand and the sea, the rush of the waters, the crash of the heavens, the prayer of the heart. As long as the sea continues to have its waves, as long as the lightning is coming down from the heavens, your memories will be with you. Jerry will be with you. The next 
psalm we're going to read is the 23rd psalm. It is perhaps the most famous of psalms that is read in these moments. From this, what I take is that we are in a moment of deep grief, probably one unseen in history, in human history, or at least for the last hundred years. This psalm has been read for thousands of years. It is a reminder that as we grieve today in these difficult moments, we are not only joined by each other here, but by all of us who are watching virtually. We are joined by every mourner who has ever said these words and those who will come after us as well. These moments can make us feel isolated, distanced, alone. But we are not. We are joined by the people who have read these words throughout all time. Adonai ro'i lo'ech sar, bin'ot deshe yarbitseni, almei menuchot yenahaleni nafshi yeshovev, yancheni v'magalei tzedek lema'an shemo, Gam ki elech begeitz al mavet lo ira ra ki ata imadi. Shiftecha umish antecha hema yenachamuni. Ta'aroch lefanai shufan neged zorerai. Shishanta vashem en roshi kosi revaya. Ach tov achesed yudafuni kol yemei chayai. Veshavti beveit Adonai lehorech yamim. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. God makes me lie down in green pastures, leads me beside still waters, and restores my soul. You lead me in right paths for the sake of your name. Even when I walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. You have set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of God forever. The next prayer that I'm going to recite is the, that I'll chant is El Malei Rachamim. It is a prayer that asks that the soul of Jerry ascend higher and higher into the heavens. It is a prayer that traditionally is stood for if you feel comfortable doing so. If you can, if not, it's totally fine to do Also a moment, if you can, just to hold on to a memory, a blessing, a, a thought that you have. El <laughs> Kedoshimu teorim, kezor araki amazirim. Et nishmat yirmiyahu shalach leolamo. Baal arachamim, yaskirehu beseter kenafav leolamim. Beitror bitzra chayim et nishmato. Adonai hu nachalato. Beyanuach veshalom al mishkavo. God of abundant mercy, God most high, may the soul of our loved one who has gone into eternity find the gift of perfect peace in your embrace, together with the holy and pure, whose light shines like the radiance of heaven. Compassionate God, hold him close to you forever, so that his soul may be bound up in the bond of life eternal. May Jerry find a home with you, and may he rest in peace, and together we say,
we all have different theologies about what God can do in this world and what God can do. So whether it's that God literally buried Moses or whether it's that the rabbis were communicating, this is something that I hold dear to every time in moments like this, to bury someone is divine. To bury someone is an act that is so generous, so beautiful, that it is like we are acting like God. So with that story in your hearts, I hope that you will be able to, if you can, um, we have gloves for you here, and um, you'll take a, um, what you can do is take a scoop of earth and place it atop the cast. And anyone who feels that you'd like to, you're more than welcome to do this. Usually it is done with a shovel, but because, again, because of the times we're living in, uh, we're, we're doing it this way instead. these words together if, if you feel comfortable reciting them. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shimei rabah ve'alma divra chirute ve'amlich malchute v'chayechon u'v'yomechon u'chaye d'chol b'it Yisrael v'agala u'v'zman kari v'imru amen yehe shimei rabah mevarach le'olam ul'almei almaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitfa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh Vit Hadar, Vit Alevi, Talal, Shme de Kutsha, Brihu, Leela, Min Kol, Birhata, Vishirata, Tushpehata, Venehemata, Zamiran, Meal, Mavim, Ru, Amen, Yehe, Shlama, Raba, Min Shemaya, Behaim, Alenu, Val, Ko, Israel, Vim, Ru, Amen, O Se Shalom, Bim Ramav, Uya, A Se Shalom, Alenu, Val, Ko, Israel, Vim, Ru, Amen. May Jerry's memory be a blessing to you always. Concludes our service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I'm so sorry that we're going through this. And then we have to be distanced like this. So I'm so sorry. Thank you. Circumstances that we're meeting for happier things. Boy, did he take a lot of money with me over the years.